What happens when a boy from the past was teleported into the future 70 years from his timeline? Will he be able to go back? Let's find out. Wade Sayaba is a first-year high schooler coming back from summer break. As he gets into his classroom, he notices that he will be sitting next to Yumahara Hina. After school, Ayaba plays some basketball. Not far from the court, Hina is watching him. Ayaba's friend approaches her and wingmans our boy by telling her how great of a person he is. Hina suddenly receives a phone notification indicating caution. On Hachijo Island, a mysterious hole appears, and a valiancer comes out, together with its pilot after he is engulfed by a singularity in a fierce aerial battle that he was in only to find out that he's been teleported to the past. Back in 2014, where don't exist yet. After he realizes that he is indeed in the past, he quickly heads out to target Wade Sayaba, who doesn't even know this guy exists at all. After locking into Ayaba, the pilot quickly set off to Ayaba's location. Ayaba receives a disaster notification on his phone and as Hina was about to tell him something, the pilot with his mecha comes in and targets Ayaba, who decides to get away with the fastest transport he can get a bicycle. Hina follows along while riding a motorcycle and tells Ayaba to follow her. When Ayaba is about to get hit, he is saved by Hina, who is now piloting another mecha. Hina tells Ayaba to get in and she beats the metallic scrapes out of the enemy pilot. After defeating the enemy, Ayaba asks Hina to explain everything to him. Hina tells him she came from the future and always knew that one day, Ayaba would be attacked by this guy. But before she could explain everything, the enemy pilot attacked them once again. The madman began a self-destruct making both his and Hina's mecha explode. Hina detects the singularity that brought the guy into the past. Hina tells Ayaba that she now realizes that it's fated to happen and says to him that he has to trust her as she drives the three of them into the tunnel. While they travel into the tunnel, the enemy mecha disintegrates, along with Hina's mech as she is continuously fading. She tells Ayaba that he's going to the future and that Dio is waiting. Ayaba wakes up inside a mecha, in the middle of an ongoing battle. He's absolutely confused. Three Valiancer pilots engage the enemy, but they are completely outnumbered and outpowered by the enemy's superior technology. Back on Ayaba's interface, he receives a nice coupling message. This message means that two people are compatible to enhance their mecha's powers. That message also alerts the defense crew. The lieutenant commander calls Ayaba and orders him to identify himself. Ayaba tells her that he's a high schooler, which still confuses the officer. The commander orders his officers to pair the mecha together. He tells them that if Ayaba shares Dio's ability, he too will be able to pilot a mecha. Dio orders Ayaba to do the coupling with him, telling Ayaba to say connect with Dio. The coupling is a success and the two pilots' mechas transform into something new. The two newly transformed mechas absolutely trash the enemies. Ayaba still doesn't know what he's doing but turns the tide of battle in his favor. Bizon, one of the enemy commanders, tells his men to retreat as they're now on the defensive. After the battle is over, the crew captures Ayaba and asks him to explain himself. Ayaba is told he's in the year 2088. 74 years into the future, the lieutenant commander tells him that there's a war going on between Japan and its allied nation against the, the Great Sigillian Empire and its overexpansion. Dio and the crew can't believe Ayaba's story, resulting in a tense argument. However, the captain has plans for Ayaba. One of the soldiers, Mayu, an officer in the Cygnus, explains the origins of Nectoribium and how it accelerated technology, resulting in this war therein. She also explains to Ayaba the mecha he piloted before as well as how the coupling system works. Dio sees them together and scolds Mayu for revealing confidential information. Ayaba comes to Mayu's defense, but before it can result in another fight, they are attacked by the enemy once again. The enemy attacks them with a Nectar rifle, a portable powerful rifle capable of bringing battleships down, tilting our heroes. Seeing how badly disadvantaged they are, the captain sends out Ayaba once more to do a nice coupling with Dio. With the increased power, Dio manages to dodge several fast shots against him, even taking a mecha with his own shots. Meanwhile, Ayaba is finally used to using a mecha and manages to put up a fight. After defeating one of the enemy pilots, Ayaba realizes that he was fighting Hina and tries to do a shotgun reunion with her. But it turns out badly as Dio is forcefully decoupled by Ayaba's actions. Ayaba tries to tell Hina about his experience and how he got there, but he is cut abruptly when the enemy attacks them rescuing Hina. However, Hina doesn't know him on this timeline and fires a gun at him. The battle enters a stalemate state, and the enemy retreats. Back at the base, Dio confronts Ayaba. He tells him his actions almost killed one of their comrades. Ayaba still has Hina in his mind, but goes to see Conrad, who almost got killed saving him. On the other hand, Hina is in jail for contacting the enemy, 
and is now under suspicion of being a traitor. Ayaba goes out to touch some grass and unwind with Mayu. They visit some familiar places in his hometown, and he heads back to Cygnus. Ayaba decides that he needs to get to Hina, and the only way to do so is to join Cygnus' crew. The next day, they received and sauce from a private ship and the Cygnus went to rescue them. Theo finds out that it's his family's ship that the enemy is trying to capture and goes into sicko mode. The captain realizes this as well and tells Ayaba to support Dio. Ayaba couples with Dio and completely obliterated the enemy, making a safe landing at Chido's base. After the battle, Dio heads to see his sister but is told off by his father. Somewhere underwater, Hina is told by her superiors that she's absolved of her crime, but she's still under monitoring and the next mission will determine her fate as a soldier. Fiona, Dio's sister, tries to visit Dio but is also blocked by the guards. Ayaba goes to see her and Fiona explains why Dio is acting like that and why her legs won't work as they used to before. After hearing her story, Ayaba pretends to be sick, making sure Fiona boards the ship to visit and have a chat with Dio. As the two siblings are about to talk, they are alerted to the presence of the enemy and both Ayaba and Dio rush to their stations. Before taking off, Fiona tells Dio that he did nothing wrong and that she believes in him, easing Dio's guilt and regrets. The whole base sets up to defend the base. However, they're fighting an uphill battle again as they face two attacks. The captain orders a full retreat and puts both Dio and Ayaba at the front to defend against an incoming attack. The Alliance activates code T2 Rise, a merge feature that uses both Bradian and Luxon as a shield that can deflect all types of projectiles and waves, nullifying the attacks. They were able to successfully escape the attack, at the cost of Chido's base. The Alliance War Room is in an uproar. The coupling experiment was defunded years ago, given how terrible the price the coupler pilots paid for each trial. Commodore Green, one of the lead generals in the Alliance, says everything is under control. The plan is basically a promotional video, in the middle of the war, to assure the people in the Alliance. That coupling is a safe practice with 100% efficacy. The video crew appears and we meet another pilot named Fromm. Dio tells Ayaba that Fromm is his classmate and pretty much excels at everything. Also good at socializing too, which is the opposite of him. Back in Chido's base, Hina thinks about Ayaba when she is visited by her comrades so they can touch some grass. Dio was supposed to be Fromm's coupling buddy, but they have been incompatible for quite some time now. So instead, he was replaced by Ayaba. The promotional video starts rolling, but it is interrupted when the Zagilia Imperial Guards arrive. The director sees this as a perfect chance to make a promotional video so the camera's rolling. Ayaba and Fromm are struggling to fend off their enemies due to how elite their formation is. But Dio's assistants manage to make a difference, despite being undergeared, making the enemy retreat. Just a few hours after the attack, another ship heads for the Cygnus, but a large storm is about to change the course of the battlefield. Mayu and Elvira explain how Ayaba's coupling affects other pilots, and for this mission, they can only choose one permanent coupling buddy. Dio and Ayaba chose themselves to be coupling buddies. The Imperial Guards attacks once again and Cygnus sends out their valiants. To clear her name, Hina is tasked with capturing Ayaba to use him as leverage out of suspicion. Using the code T2 Rise, Ayaba and Dio manage to defeat the Imperial Guard's commander. However, the newly fitted ship from Chido's base attacks them as soon as their Rise fusion is over. The captain orders a full retreat into the storm, but as Ayaba is about to land, he is shot by Hina. When she tackles him into the ship, Ayaba maneuvers out of the ship's hull, resulting in the loss of control of their mech. Falling into the rising sea level, Ayaba wakes up on an island in the middle of the storm and searches for Hina. Hina wakes up inside a cave with Ayaba and immediately subdues Ayaba. Realizing they were trapped, the two stay inside the cave to let the storm pass. Ayaba tells Hina about his story and how Hina sent him into the future. But this Hina doesn't remember anything remotely close to that and doesn't believe him. While he tells his story, a landslide occurs, trapping both Hina and Ayaba inside. They try to dig the soil out, but Hina passes out from exhaustion, which forces Ayaba to go all out, digging his way out based on pure will alone. But a surge of water comes in, almost drowning Hina, until he saves her. Due to the storm, commanders from both armies opt not to look for both Hina and Ayaba. After the storm passes, Dio goes looking for Ayaba, while Hina's team is looking for her. Dio manages to contact Ayaba and get his coordinates. Ayaba then tells Hina to tell him the Zagilia's channel, so they can rescue her too. Before he leaves, Ayaba assures Hina that he doesn't want her to be taken as a prisoner, and gives her a hairpin, which is the hairpin used by Hina Ayaba had met before. Back in Cygnus, Dio notices the gloomy look on Ayaba's face, hinting that there's something wrong. The crew are visited by Elvira's mentor, Professor Fermi, 
the creator of the coupling system. He tells them about the secrets of coupling technology and how it works. He also reveals that another scientist is working for Zagilia. That is Dr. Han. The guy looks like he works for the SS. After a series of tests on the coupling, Dio confronts Ayaba, telling him that he could fool the machines, but not him. Ayaba explains that in this future, there's no Hina. The Hina he met on the island isn't the same person who sent him into the future. Dio then pops Ayaba's face and the two fight wildly until their comrades stop them. Suddenly, Professor Fermi visits the boys and explains how coupling works. He sheds some light on Ayaba's story. While traveling, Cygnus is attacked yet again by their enemies, sending waves upon waves of missiles. Dio and Ayaba argue once again. The two insult each other, calling Crybaby and Siskin, while fending off volleys of missiles. The enemy had the right read on their maximum coupling time, but due to their argument they reached a new record and defeated the enemies, until they backed off. Following the death of Professor Fermi, the Alliance is tasked with moving in group. While the Alliance crew is busy in Hawaii, Zagilia's army prepares a covert operation with Hina's father, Commander Ryazan as the leader. Zagilia's infiltration mission starts and throws Hawaii base into chaos. Cygnus crew are ordered to help in the defense. Ryazan's team manages to enter the coupling mecha's compound, but the resistance injured him while he saved Hina. Seeing Ayaba's mecha, Hina is already being flooded by thoughts of Ayaba and her real identity. In his dying moments, Ryazan tells Hina that he's not his father and that she's an orphan of war, saved by him ten years ago. Ryazan tells her to save herself and orders her to move, while he sacrifices himself. While trying to find his way in, Ayaba finds Hina crying. Hina tells him what did happen to her father, and Ayaba reassures her that no matter what happens, she's Hina that he knows. He also asks Hina to join him in the alliance, but Bizon finds them and starts shooting. He takes Hina away from Ayaba, while further suspecting of Hina's connection with him. Dio and Fram arrive in time and take away Ayaba as well. Unfortunately, their mechas, Luxon and Bradian are taken by the enemy. Ayaba tried to reason that they couldn't let Hina get away and convinced Dio to chase after them using the old coupling mechas. The two set out and go after the stolen mechas and do a successful coupling, despite the limitations and restrictions of the equipment they have. The enemy commander orders Bizon and the gang to retreat, signaling the end of their mission. Hina sends off her dad one last time after being keyed. Bizon confronts her about Ayaba and Hina reasons her way out using Ayaba's story. But Bizon thinks it's a lie and blackmails her, while stealing her first kiss. But he still gets rejected. Dr. Han made a series of coupling tests and only managed to get one good result with Hina. He later gives her a shot, which pretty much zombifies her the entire fight. Back in Cygnus, Dio tells the crew that he saw Ayaba's memories, as well as Ayaba with him. Dr. Han proposes to Hina's commander that she be transferred into his research corps as a soldier in the coupling tech. Bizon also volunteers to be his coupling buddy, but had to go through a painful coupling activation. The entire Hawaiian fleet receives orders that they are to blast their way into Alaska and destroy the Gorgon Cannon by the enemy. Arriving near the coast, the Alliance meets the resistance, but were tilted heavily when the Garapushka Cannon fired, decimating half their forces. Hina and Bizon go out to end the Alliance's remaining forces. As the two enter the coupling, they damage the Cygnus. They end off most of Alliance's mechas, until the arrival of both Ayaba and Dio's new mechas, Luxon and Bradian next. The four mechas engage in a coupling mecha battle. The captain of Cygnus orders an all-out attack, and Elvira tells Ayaba and Dio about the plan. The two quickly decoupled and Ayaba went for Hina, waking her up out of her inhibitions and Hina receives her memories back. The enemy commander prepares for another shot of Garapushka, but Ayaba tells Hina to do a coupling with him, telling her to trust him. The couple fuse into a similar code T2 rise, completely deflecting the Garapushka cannon beat, creating a singularity, similar to what appeared in the first scene. As Bizon is about to be pulled in, Hina realizes that Ayaba was telling the truth and went after Bizon to protect Ayaba from the past. Realizing that Hina is the only one trapped in the Steins Gate-like timeline, Ayaba goes out of his way to rescue Hina. Dio comes in as well to wingman him and together, they blasted the metallic scrapes out of Bizon. They get out of the time tunnel to end Hina's time traveling cycle without breaking the timeline. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.